the show on the road. Hold on a sec. Okay. And can you guys see the screen? Is it sharing? Yep. Awesome. Okay. So why we did this is, uh, well, obviously this is a, a year, the next screen. It's 20 days until the election. And um, as Sugo sponsors over the summer, we all talked about how we've all basically had some kind of issue, some kind of social media, mostly um, with either, you know, the election or with the demonstrations over the summer. So it's just a really, really touchy year. And we uh, usually at Mountain Range, we will run a mock election with our social studies department and it's just not always, it's not the best year for that. So we are kind of redirecting things and really trying to get kids to think about the issues. And so we looked at this, um, this site called Talking Across the Divide and all, I shared the, the link in the chat, I believe, if, if I didn't, I can do so. But um, it, it just gives you ways to talk about what's going on in a civil way. And we really just focused on um, the New York Times has a pretty good teacher led um, discussion series. And so that's really like what the focus is here. And so um, we use that one. And then we also lo looked at facing history and ourselves teaching resources for election 2020. And like I said, you can click on all of these. There's links on all of them. We provided them for you there. Um, but uh, back. Um, we started with fostering civil discussion. And so it's just a whole series on learning to discuss and I'm not a robot. I haven't been on this site today. So hold on just as there it goes. Um, it's a whole a whole series of lessons from the New York Times. So this doesn't happen in your classroom or with your students where there's just explosions going on because we've all been there, especially this year. Um, I, we've had a few blow ups, but nothing humongous lately and hopefully it stays that way we'll knock on wood but it, it just goes through um, civil discussion and, and good reminders for students and good lessons for teachers to run uh, you guys can look at, at those on your own uh, basically how it, there's four parts to it um, learning to argue productively online arguments how to deal with cancel culture when we get outside of, of school and we go into social media and students just tearing each other down. And that's the last part about it, speaking up without tearing each other down. And uh, students have, have actually been pretty receptive to that. And then also we've been using, um, hold on, I've got two screens. So if there's chat, yeah, I'll share the link again here. Um, the news, news groups it's basically like a, a book group of media literacy so essentially how it works the students decide on four topics that they are really interested in and they will um, follow those stories in the media and, and di on different sites so you know it could be anything from like msnbc to cnn local news etc and they they talk they come in and they talk once a week about their topic they present to the class about what they found and it, the topics can change as well. And there's a um, link here to a story in the New York Times about it. And then there's also the actual teacher's lesson plan on there um, here for news group unit plan. And you guys can check that out on your own time. Um, and then, you know, we, we're really trying to focus with students about uh, where they stand, not necessarily where their friends stand or their parents or wh whomever in their life uh, because a lot of times we'll start st talking to students about the issues and they'll say they're either Democrat or Republican and maybe that doesn't really match up with where their values are. are. So we linked here to um, a couple websites where you can go and, and look and students can go and look and, and take quizzes about what their actual beliefs are. And then um, we included as well questions here for a lot of the stories like worksheets we we've made um, for students to go and and look at some of the issues and that's going to be about the next five or six slides is uh, big time issues that are going on right now that students uh, want to talk about and they don't really feel like they have a safe place and you know, social media is a little scary 
right now and sometimes even speaking up in class. So these are questions to, to guide them with links to the, the articles on there as well. And so the first one we, we talk about is what your identity is and how does that really affect your political beliefs and values. And this, there's this really great article from the New York Times which follows students who became kind of famous um, during the 2016 election and um, where they are now and how they feel about their politics because a lot of them were like 12, 13, 14 years old. Uh, this young man on the right is from Grand Junction High School and he's featured, he's the first student featured in the story. Um, then the, the next one we did was COVID-19 and how we've responded as a country and state and we, we've talked about that and broken it down and what maybe we did well and what we can do better. And um, students have a lot of thoughts on this one. Obviously, it's affecting all of our lives right now. Um, and then we also talk about what it makes, what makes a great leader with another uh, discussion question guide. And it, it looks at how leaders across the country and also in the United States, how they've reacted to, to the actual um, pandemic and you know, who's done well and who hasn't and, and whatnot and why. And then the next one is racial justice. And I, this is a really, really touchy one. And um, we've spent a few days talking about this one. Um, students really, really want to talk about it. it. It is a difficult one and you have to be really careful because there are a lot of landmines on that one. Um, and then education in the COVID-19 era, another one everybody has opinions on. And for each of these, if you just click that link again, there's there are um, there are question sheets on there that you can have students do, or you, if you want to do them as well. And then voting in democracy, and then advertising and politics. And we have a few different links on here. And there's political ad tracking, which is just a, a site that has lots of different uh, current ads. So they update it daily. And then political pundits of TikTok, most of the students, you know, they are on TikTok, they talk about TikTok, and that's basically like their news media of like CNN or MSNBC and um, Fox News. And so we talk about the, the people that are on there, the hype houses, they're called on there for Democrats and Republicans and who's running those and what they're selling and, you know, how they engage and all of those things. That's a pretty good article there. It's, it's a little bit older. It's, uh, I think it focuses on Bernie Sanders back in February before the pandemic started. And then Facebook in 2016 and what's going on um, today. And then there's a political advertising worksheet for, it can be for anything for TV, um, news media, um, radio, any of them that, that, that students actually have to go and analyze and add um, that's on, that they see on TV. And then we have this one that it asks them specifically what's important to them. Um, it talks about Gen Z and you know, they have definite strong opinions, maybe even stronger than some millennials. And they don't really feel like there's anybody that they can identify with uh, politically right now. It's kind of a, a, a pick the lesser of the evils for them. I told them to get used to it, but um, that's just, that's where it is. And there's a link on there as well for you to go to. And then we um, also broke down just the official pages of, for Biden and Trump. And then the New York Times has interactive pages that really describes who they are, where they've come from, where they stand on certain issues. And then there's also a link to ProCon, uh, which if you go on there, if you're not familiar with it, it, it just puts, it's bipartisan and it, um, it puts or nonpartisan and, and puts all of their issues right next to one another. Um, we did talk about running a mock election this year and we're not going to because uh, we're not being brave. I'll be honest. We're just not, we have enough going on um, with uh, hybrid teaching and online teaching and, and COVID going on in our, in our school. And uh, it was another distraction that we just really didn't feel like we wanted to get into this year. Uh, we did run, what we've run one every year since 2008, um, but 
Uh, this year we're not going to do one. Um, I think that should be up to your school though. And if you need help on that, we can always um, chat later. Online discussion forums, we usually do those as well with our freshmen and our juniors in uh, um, American Lit. Uh, this year we're not going to just because again, uh, the, the controversy, maybe we should be more brave, but we just decided not to as an executive decision. And then for students, we also have on there um, registering to vote, uh, both USA and Colorado. Uh, we focus on Colorado, obviously, because it's Colorado uh, based, but we put it on there. If some students said, you know, that maybe they weren't Colorado residents right now, they had moved from somewhere else. So uh, that information is there as well. And then at the end, um, we asked them to make a prediction um, for for 2020 and it's another worksheet and ask them to create a Google calendar and oh, that's not the right link, I'll fix that one. Um, but it asks them to uh, make predictions about what's gonna happen in the next 20 days, maybe even past. And we talk about what happened in the year 2000 with Gore v. Bush and how it wasn't decided until December 12th um, when the Supreme Court made a decision and then and Gore then um, stepped down. And so we talk about this could be going on for, for weeks or months afterwards. And we usually connect this back to running our own elections and also ballot watching and, and other things for that are real world within our school um, for, for elections that happen in the spring and why this is all important to not only the real world, but also what goes on with student councils. Um, and that's like essentially all I have uh, I, if anybody has questions, you guys can feel free to ask them. And so are all of those links available um, for us so we can share them with our schools? Yeah, the, I made this, uh, I shared it publicly, so it's not just in my school district anymore. Um, so if one of the links, like I saw that one is incorrect, um, I'll fix it for you. If, if you see anything else that's wrong, just let me know. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I, I essentially just did this so people had resources. I know it's kind of, it's a rough year of, of running this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, if you want to send any links or whatever that you have to Whitney and we can include those with um, the video, the recording that we'll send out as well. Um, yeah, I'll send, uh, I'll send the folder over to you, Whitney, with all the documents that are attached to the link as well. And I'm, I'm fine with sharing them. Perfect. Yeah, okay. we'll get this. Yeah, we'll get this out. I think the plan will be to, um, to send out the last three weeks, probably tomorrow, and that way everyone can watch those. Uh, at their leisure and then that'll give us I think we have three more weeks of uh, of the webinars here for the fall so um, if that's all you got really appreciate it Ian thank you for presenting and thank you everyone that was able to attend uh, live in person thanks for being here guys Good thanks guys Ian. appreciate it thank you thanks nicely done